In the world of fighter jets, there's a simple rule. Bigger is better, more expensive is more powerful. At least that's what the Americans and the Europeans want you to believe. They roll out their magnificent, earth-shatteringly expensive machines, gleaming under the lights of air shows and the world gasps. You have the F-22 Raptor, a machine so secret its own pilots probably don't know how half of it works. Then there's the F-35 Lightning II, the trillion-dollar jet that promises to do everything, from making your morning coffee to winning World War III single-handedly. It's the Swiss Army knife of the skies. If a Swiss army knife costs more than the entire Swiss economy, these jets are the Goliaths. They are dripping with technology so advanced it borders on witchcraft. They have stealth coatings that make them invisible to radar, engines that could outdrag a volcano, and computers that are probably sentient. When one of these things flies over, you feel it in your bones. It's a statement of power, it's a club, the Billion Dollar Jet Club, and membership comes with a very, very steep price tag. And then from a land of sensible furniture, meatballs, very good pop music, comes something completely different. It comes from Sweden. It's called the Saab Gripen E, and it is the David of our story. It's small, it's nimble. It doesn't look like it was designed by a committee of science fiction authors trying to out-intimidate each other. It looks like a proper fighter jet, sharp, pointy, and built for a purpose. It doesn't scream, I cost a billion dollars. Instead, it whispers, Come on then, if you think you're hard enough. It's the terrier nipping at the heels of the big lumbering mastiffs. The Gripen isn't a new idea that just popped up in 2025. Its ancestors have been around for years, quietly getting on with the job. But this new version, the E model, is a different beast altogether. Saab looked at the world of bloated, over-budget super jets and thought, we can do better. And we can do it for less. So they took the clever, reliable Gripen C, Gripen D, and gave it a shot of adrenaline. A bigger engine, more fuel, a revolutionary new radar, and an electronic warfare system so advanced it could probably hack your smart fridge and order a thousand tubs of ice cream. It's a giant killer in a welterweight's body. When you put the Gripen E next to an F-35, the difference is comical. The F-35 looks like a bodybuilder who's had a few too many pies. The Gripen looks like a marathon runner. It's lean, it's mean, and it has an air of quiet confidence. It doesn't rely on being invisible. It relies on being smarter. It's not about hiding from the enemy, outthinking them, outmaneuvering them, and being in the right place at the right time. The Swedes have never been ones for pointless extravagance. The gripen -y is the perfect expression of that philosophy. It does exactly what it needs to do, and it does it brilliantly. So here we have our matchup in one corner, the heavyweight champions of the world, uh, the F-22, the F-35, the Eurofighter Typhoon. They are backed by the biggest economies on Earth with budgets that could solve world hunger. And in the other corner, the challenger from the North, the Saab Gripen E. It doesn't have the same budget, it doesn't have the same political muscle, but what it does have is a very, very clever design, a very sharp brain, and a complete disregard for the established rules of the game. This is going to be fun. The logic behind the billion dollar jets seems solid at first. It's the shock and awe principle applied to engineering. The idea is to build a machine so technologically superior that it can't possibly be beaten. Take stealth, for instance. The F-22 and the F-35 are designed to be ghosts. They are shaped like diamonds and coated in special radar-absorbing paint that supposedly makes them invisible to enemy scanners. The theory is simple. You can't shoot down what you can't see. So you spend billions developing this invisibility cloak and you believe you have an unbeatable advantage. You can fly into enemy airspace, drop your bombs and be home in time for tea without anyone ever knowing you were there. Then there's the sheer firepower. These jets are packed with more computing power than a small city. The F-35's famous sensor fusion means the pilot sees a single unified picture of the battlefield on their helmet display. The jet's computers pull in data from its own radar, from other planes, from satellites, from ships, and blend it all together. The pilot becomes less of a pilot and more of a battlefield manager, a god in the machine, pointing at targets on a screen. It's an intoxicating vision of technological dominance. It promises a clean clinical war where the other side never stands a chance. This obsession with overwhelming technology creates a cycle. 
One country builds a fifth generation jet so its rivals have to build one too, only slightly better and even more expensive. It's a high stakes game of top trumps played with national treasuries. The price tag itself becomes a weapon. Announcing you've spent $1.7 trillion on a fighter program is a way of telling the world how serious you are. It's the military equivalent of buying the most expensive watch in the shop. It doesn't necessarily tell the time any better, but it sends a message. The message is, we are unbeatable because we can afford to be. And so for years, this has been the accepted wisdom. To be a top tier air force, you needed these magnificent wallet destroying platforms. They were seen as unstoppable. An F-22 was a silver bullet. An F-35 was a key that could unlock any defense. The sheer cost and complexity were seen as proof of their superiority. They were the kings of the sky, and their reign seemed absolute. Every king, every empire, every supposedly unstoppable force. The Gripen E looks at the rule book written by the big boys, tears it up, and sets it on fire. Its first act of rebellion is its price. An F-35 will set you back well over $100 million, and that's just to buy it. The grip and E, it costs roughly half that. But the real genius is not the sticker price, it's the running costs. An F-35 costs something like $44,000 an hour to fly. Think about that. Every 60 minutes it's in the air. You could buy a brand new Mercedes. The grip and E, on the other hand, costs less than a tenth of that around $4,700 per hour. That's not a small difference, it's a game changer. This incredible affordability comes from its design philosophy. Saab didn't try to invent everything from scratch. They used proven reliable components where possible and focused their genius on the things that really matter, the brain and the senses. The Gripen-E has one of the most advanced AESA radars in the world, a cutting-edge sensor called the Skyward G that can track stealth aircraft without using radar and a revolutionary electronic warfare suite. It's like taking a reliable Toyota Hilux and fitting it with the engine and computer from a Formula One car. You get all the performance without the eye-watering complexity and maintenance bills. This focus on brains over brute force is what makes the Gripen truly terrifying to its expensive rivals. While an F-35 relies on being invisible, the Gripen is designed to win a fight even when it is seen. Its electronic warfare system is not just defensive, it's a weapon. It can blind enemy jets and deafen enemy jets, projecting false targets onto their screens, confusing their missiles and generally causing electronic chaos. It turns a dogfight into a battle of wits. The Gripen's pilot isn't just flying a plane, they are conducting an electronic orchestra and the enemy is their unwilling audience. It's a completely different way of thinking about air combat. Sweden designed its Cold War defense around destroyed air bases, so they needed a jet that didn't need them. The Gripen E can take off and land on an ordinary public road, just 800 meters long and 9 meters wide. Let that sink in. Your local B road could be a forward operating base. This works because of its strong landing gear, clever canard wings, extra lift at low speeds, and powerful brakes. Dispersed Grippens could be hidden in forests, use motorway sections, appear from nowhere to strike, then melt back into the countryside. Almost impossible to find on the ground. You can't bomb an air force that doesn't have a fixed address. This is practiced regularly. The Swedish Air Force shuts public roads and lands Grippens on them. And its other superpower is rapid turnaround. A Gripen can land, be met by a small truck crew, be refueled, rearmed with missiles and cannon shells, and have engines checked in under 10 minutes. The pilot may not even leave the cockpit. One Gripen can generate a huge number of sorties in a day, exhausting other air forces. Big jets like the F-35 need specialist teams, hangars, and hours of diagnostics. It's like a thoroughbred racehorse needing constant grooming versus a hardy mountain pony that just needs grass. The Gripen's ruggedness and flexibility give a huge strategic advantage. It means you don't have to put all your eggs in one basket, you don't have to defend a few massive vulnerable air bases, your air force becomes fluid, unpredictable and resilient. A simple solution to a complex problem. Section 7. Why smart money is on the Swede. So why are countries like Brazil, Czech Republic, Hungary, South Africa, Thailand choosing the Gripen? Are they just being cheap? No, they're being clever. These nations understand something fundamental about modern warfare. 
It's not just about having the most expensive toy. It's about having a credible, sustainable and effective air force. They look at the F-35 and see a jet that will consume their entire defense budget, not just to buy, but to operate for the next 30 years. They see a jet so complex it requires American technicians on hand to keep it flying. It's a deal with a lot of strings attached. The Gripen offers something different. It offers independence. Saab sells you the jet and the knowledge to maintain and upgrade it yourself. For Brazil, that was a huge deal. Not just buying a fighter, co-developing the two-seater F model and building much of the aircraft in Brazil. This transfers technology, creates high-tech jobs and gives sovereign control over defense. They aren't just a customer, they are a partner. You don't get that with an F-35, you get a, a user agreement. For limited budgets, the Gripen's low running costs mean you can actually afford to fly it. It's no good having a dozen super stealth jets if pilots only get 80 flying hours a year because you can't afford the fuel. Pilots become inexperienced and ineffective. With Gripen, you can buy more jets and fly them more often. More planes in the air, more pilots with real training, a much more potent fighting force overall. For the price of 20 F-35S, you can barely afford to fly. You could have 40 Gripens in the air constantly, which is the better deterrent. Many air forces are making this calculation in 2025. They see the allure of big American and European jets, but also the crippling cost and loss of sovereignty. They see the Gripen as the smart choice, 90% of the capability for 50% of the price with running costs that won't bankrupt you. A fighter for the real world, not a fantasy arms race. A decision based on logic and pragmatism, not ego and prestige. The sensible shoes of the fighter jet world, and right now, 